In 1997, the renowned developers at Squaresoft managed to reinvent the RPG formula for the newest generation of gamers. With the booming success of Final Fantasy VII worldwide, many consumers expected that Square would continue publishing futuristic, open-world games to drive their flagship franchise further into success. But in between the releases of Final Fantasy VII and VIII, the two most explicitly futuristic games in the series, Square released Final Fantasy Tactics in 1998 to excessive critical praise. Three years earlier, upcoming game director Yasumi Matsuno began his work at Squaresoft. Previously known for his involvement in the Ogre Battle and Tactics Ogre games, Yasumi put his experience to work to develop a strategy RPG that could achieve success using Final Fantasy's growing popularity. Tactics was like no other Final Fantasy game. Developers at Square even admitted that Tactics was made for strategy fans that were unimpressed by the branching nature of Matsuno's other games like Tactics Ogre. And with Square nervously watching Tactics release, it was looking like another one of Square's risks. Of course, they had their reasons for being doubtful. Final Fantasy Tactics boasted gameplay and a setting that were completely different from those used in Final Fantasy VII. The game could have potentially alienated new fans that were desperately needed to help pay off the huge budgets of Square's future projects, including Final Fantasy IX and VIII. Thankfully, the game was a hit. In Japan, where it was released early, the game had sold 1.24 million copies by the end of 1997, and as of August 2011, the game has reached 2.4 million copies worldwide. And through all the hoops it had to jump through to get released, this number is what confuses me the most. Not because the game doesn't deserve the figure. It confuses me because it's 2017, and as a Final Fantasy fan, I have yet to play one of the most highly praised games in one of my most favorite series. So with that said, let's jump into the world of Ivalice and see just what Square's first foray into the SRPG genre looks like. Now, while my experience with Ivalice is limited, tactical RPGs remain some of my favorite games. Fire Emblem Awakening, XCOM, and Disgaea are excellent examples of games that have kept me busy since the moment I picked them up. And while I see a lot of similarities, the game offers a completely different take on the SRPG that I'm pretty excited to experience. Final Fantasy Tactics introduces us to the world of Ivalice, a land plagued by conflicts dating to Final Fantasy XII's time period. Now, before I get caught up in the lore, let me lay down some parameters. Ivalice is huge and spans multiple games in the Final Fantasy franchise, covering every piece of lore in Ivalice, from the Galtean Alliance to the Church of Glabados, could take up an entire video series. For this reason, I'm going to talk about the story of Final Fantasy Tactics alone. If you are interested further by this, I would seriously recommend playing the games in the series yourself. Understanding the entire lore of Ivalice is no easy task. With that said, Final Fantasy Tactics drops us in Ivalice just as a 50-year armed conflict, the 50 Years War, is coming to an end. Peace seems to be within reach, but soon Ivalice's high king, Omdoria, dies with two heirs to the throne. The legitimate heir, Prince Orinus, is an infant and seen by half of the kingdom as an unsuitable heir to the throne. However, his other successor, Prince Ovelia, was adopted and therefore not a pure member of the royal family. The rift between the two sides grows, and a new war begins. The Lion's War. This is where your main character, Ramza Beolv, comes in. Ramza is the youngest son in the noble Beolv family. After dying due to a health complication, Balbanis, Ramza's father, fails to save his children from the turmoil of politics, leaving Zalbag, Ramza, Dysgard, and Alma in the heat of the Lion's War. But the story doesn't stay this simple. Throughout the game, we meet characters like Wygraf and Draklau, who spin the narrative and turn the story into a much more dire and world-breaking struggle. For the sake of spoilers, I won't give away the changes, but I will admit that FFT's ending, while interesting, was not one of my favorites in the series. However, if you judge the story as one whole package, Final Fantasy Tactics has one of my favorite stories in all of gaming. 
Not only is it believable, but it is a mature take on the franchise's familiar figures that feels refreshing. You see your Final Fantasy standards such as chocobos, moogles, summons, and a class-changing system, but it's mixed in with an excellent story that isn't only about Ramza. Religion, betrayal, and the role of nobility are major themes in Final Fantasy tactics that are presented carefully, but with conviction. There is plenty of emphasis on character development to enjoy here, but the central focus on executive turmoil and power struck a chord with me. If none of this sounds appealing to you, let me leave you with this. If anything, you will enjoy how different Final Fantasy Tactics story is, while managing to still feel familiar. I've heard a lot of people compare this game to Game of Thrones, and although I've never watched it, I feel like it is something worth mentioning if you're interested in experiencing more medieval content. Unfortunately, the game does suffer from translation issues that were ultimately fixed in the PSP version, and while they don't bother me or detract from the experience, the errors are worth mentioning for those of you who care. Final Fantasy Tactics is a strategy RPG which means standard fare to many avid video game players. You control up to five units per battle, with guest characters that assist your cause at certain points of the game. Unlike other strategy RPGs, Fire Emblem being the most popular, you don't move your entire army in one turn. Instead, each unit on screen has a speed stat that determines the frequency of their turns. If you have a ninja with a haste boost, there's a good chance that he will move two turns before you even see your calculator do anything. Additionally, Final Fantasy Tactics boasts a fully 3D battle screen that can be rotated during your turn. Not only is there a horizontal grid aspect to Final Fantasy Tactics gameplay, but characters with boosted jumping abilities such as Dragoons can take advantage of Final Fantasy Tactics verticality, adding a new layer of strategy to the SRPG genre. The first time I threw a stone at an enemy on a roof, I expected minimal damage. But after watching them take damage from the stone, then fall off the roof taking even more damage, I was extremely impressed. The game takes full advantage of its 3D battlefield, and in most cases, it does not disappoint. If you're a fan of Fire Emblem, you probably expect to control the battle's pace. Personally, I enjoy playing strategy games as quickly as possible, trying out different combinations, and ultimately finding the perfect plan of attack. Unfortunately, this does not really work in tactics. The strategy is there, but battles feel extremely slow. See, Final Fantasy Tactics starts you off at regular text display speed that can immediately become annoying when it demands multiple confirmations for each command. Perhaps the game wants you to carefully plan out each move. Thankfully, these commands can be turned off, but for me, the problem persisted. I can't really understand if the game has aged poorly or if I've just been spoiled by newer SRPGs that let me skip battle animations and play at my own pace but this is definitely something to take into consideration. My biggest problem with Final Fantasy Tactics is just how broken the game really is. For new players, make sure you have two save files that are about an hour apart in terms of game time. There are many sections in Final Fantasy Tactics that force you through a series of battle one after the other. And while you can't leave the sequence to grind for XP or restock your inventory, the game stupidly allows you to save in between battles in these sequences. Now, this doesn't seem like a terrible thing at first, but you soon realize that your units may not be prepared for a battle that is heavy on stat nerfs. This leads to many dead save files, in which you can't continue because of an impossible battle, but you can't go back because the game allowed you to prematurely save. If you don't want to use multiple save files, at the very least, use them in Chapter 3. There are also some mechanics that the game completely avoids explaining to you. Specifically, this was the Zodiac system that ended up destroying a game run because I had no idea it existed. Basically, depending on the birthdays of certain units, their horoscopes will be compatible or incompatible with one another. This seems like something trivial at first, but it can end up detracting from an otherwise good team composition. For example, my Dragoon, Eric, has an incompatible Zodiac sign with my healer, McNorton, meaning that heals and stat buffs have a huge chance of missing entirely or having little effectiveness. 
After missing four Azuna spells in a row, I looked up the importance of this feature and was unpleasantly surprised. It's not just that the game doesn't explain anything, but from the get-go you are led to believe that you really don't need any help. The first battle allows you to sweep the enemy without much effort, and because of this, I thought I understood the mechanics pretty well. Combined with my previous SRPG experience, I ignored the tutorials completely and got punished for it in the end. One of Final Fantasy Tactics' most redeeming qualities is its excellent presentation. From the crisp sprite animation to the character portraits, the world maps, spell animations, and FMVs, Final Fantasy Tactics, just like other games in the franchise, remains a joy to look at. The PSP version also includes fully animated cutscenes for important story points that are worth checking out if you want to immerse yourself in the world of Ivalice. Tactics can be an extremely hard game for new players, but it can also be too easy if you're experienced enough to bend the game to your will. This game is filled to the brim with cheats and glitches. Throughout the internet I was able to find glitches that max out JP without fighting a single battle, as well as a glitch that lets you duplicate powerful endgame weapons. On top of that, early game grinding can turn your ragtag band of heretics into complete gods. Now, I am a big fan of the gaming historian, but in his video entitled Games You Must Play, Final Fantasy Tactics, he mentions that Tactics is not like other games in the FF series that expect you to grind. And while I can see a strategy fan getting away with rarely leveling his characters up, the average player is going to be doing a lot of grinding that will inevitably lead to an overpowered 5-man squad that kills the final boss without losing a single unit. Another channel I'm a fan of, Dark Pixel Gaming, forgot to mention a small detail about the party system in Final Fantasy Tactics. Basically, you never need to use more than five characters. If you have more than five, you can probably just remove them as a unit, because Final Fantasy Tactics is a game that clearly wants you to invest time and effort into a few central characters. I don't think the developers meant for you to neglect every other unit, but they didn't put in any buffers that would force you to engage your entire team in the story of the game. Another aspect I didn't enjoy was their handling of story characters in your party. It's not that they are ineffective, it's quite the opposite actually. Every story character I got was significantly better than one of my party members, forcing me to slowly replace everyone on my team except for my dedicated healer. Now, when I say these characters are the opposite of ineffective, I really mean to say that Sid Orlando, a swordsman who you get in Chapter 4, comes equipped with the Holy Blade Excalibur, a full set of knight's armor, and a job class that lets you master every sword skill in the game. I don't hate this by any means, but I can't help but feeling like the game intends for you to disregard characters that you invest so much time into. Then there is the Calculator class. I have to give them some credit here. A Calculator class is a pretty interesting idea. Using mathematics to dish out damage sounds boring at first, but with a little bit of mechanical tweaking, the Calculator instantly becomes an unstoppable juggernaut that can crush enemy units for a grand total of zero MP. The biggest takeaway from all this is that Tactics is focused heavily on one thing in particular. Reward experienced players and punish newcomers. There is truly no in-between. Before I move on, I want to get something out of the way. I hate RNG systems in video games. For those of you who aren't familiar with RNG, it stands for Random Number Generator, and it is commonplace in many RPGs. Have you ever hit a 30% accuracy sheer cold attack in Pokemon? Well, you can thank RNG for that. Have you ever stepped on a red block in Mario Party and lost some coins? Once again, thank RNG. Anytime there is a chance element in video games, RNG is the culprit behind it. And let's be real, it is without a doubt the most frustrating aspect to Final Fantasy Tactics. And to be fair, it's not just Tactics that has this problem. Fire Emblem and other beloved SRPGs rely heavily on RNG to balance their gameplay. I've seen it all, the level 8 priest that misses a cure. 
the enemy in Fire Emblem that attacks your Lancer with a sword and still gets a critical hit. RNG is everywhere, and it halts a fun playthrough by demanding that you restart your game. And as much as I hate RNG, I have to admit that I can't think of a better way to make an SRPG. To be honest, Strategy is sometimes up to pure instinct, and you can argue that RNG captures this element pretty well. Also, I'd be lying if the RNG gods didn't help me every now and then too. But at the end of the day, I'm not a fan of RNG, but I still enjoy most SRPGs that I come across. There are plenty of other small nitpicky things that really get to me. Maybe it's just age, or maybe I'm spoiled by newer strategy RPGs. But soft resets and the ability to exit a menu are two convenient and easy features that are unexplainably missing from Final Fantasy Tactics. It's extremely frustrating that you cannot reset a battle without watching the PS1 BIOS over and over again. And it gets worse when you start mashing the O button and accidentally select New Game, a menu option that you cannot exit without, you guessed it, restarting your console. Trivial things, I know, but one mistake in a battle can force you to sit there doing nothing for another five minutes. But perhaps the most annoying feature of all is the inability to skip cutscenes. Now I know what you're thinking, if Final Fantasy Tactics story is so good, why would you want to skip the cutscenes? Well, as good as Final Fantasy Tactics story may be, there are plenty of players that are playing the game exclusively to experience a unique strategy RPG, and may not want to be bothered by cutscenes. Additionally, if you get a game over in a battle that starts off with a long cutscene, then you better get ready to reset your PS1, watch the BIOS, carefully select the continue option, and re-watch a cutscene that will eventually get stale. I've had the shock and awe of many story sequences overshadowed by all the hoops you have to jump through just to play the game. Specifically, a scene in Chapter 1 directly sets up the events and scenario scripting of the rest of the game. And to make matters worse, very few of these issues were fixed in the War of the Lions port of the game on the PSP. I can't really offer any reasonable solutions to these problems, so if you're interested in this game, prepare for a lot of tedium. Now to be fair, I'm not really attacking Final Fantasy Tactics, but we shouldn't make excuses for a flawed game. It reminds me of Sonic Adventure. Again, I can easily understand why a lot of people enjoy the game, and I have to admit, there's a lot to love. But it is overwhelmed by mindlessly added features that water down the entire experience. Final Fantasy Tactics is the same in my view. Innovations in the use of the speed stat, the 3D battle screens that change the format of the SRPG genre, and amazing presentation and music make Final Fantasy Tactics seem like the full package. But underneath all the glamour is a truly broken class system that punishes new players and avoids explaining important mechanics. Without a doubt, Final Fantasy Tactics' biggest advantage is its personality and creativity. Included are 20 unique job classes, 22 in the PSP version, all with heavily customizable skill trees and team combinations. Every playthrough is truly different. Not only is the story amazing, but it is a huge departure from the series norm as I said before, and it feels refreshing. Tactics is a game leaking with innovation and creativity. If you can appreciate nothing else, then this detail alone will make the game more memorable. Of course, a Tactics review wouldn't be complete unless I offered some praise for the beautiful soundtrack. An important detail to note is that Nobuo Uematsu, famed Final Fantasy composer since the first game, did not have any influence on the soundtrack of Final Fantasy Tactics. This time around, Hitoshi Sakimoto and Masaharu Iwata were brought to compose an enormous 96-song soundtrack. As veterans of the Ogre Battle and Tactics Ogre games, Iwata and Sakimoto were well acquainted with the director, Matsuno, and were able to coordinate a vision for bringing real atmosphere to Ivalice. That is really my favorite part about it. The game uses music as a means for developing atmosphere rather than characters, and if you've played Final Fantasy XII, you'll learn that the two composers continue the central theme established in Final Fantasy Tactics to make Ivalice seem like a truly cohesive world. 
Final Fantasy Tactics is a classic gem from the PS1's extensive library. A game hailed by critics and fans alike, Tactics' huge contribution to the SRPG genre and its bounding creativity earn it a spot at the top of the Final Fantasy compendium. And at the end of the day, while certain aspects of the game drove me insane, I consider Final Fantasy Tactics to be a flawed masterpiece and a game that no fan of the series should overlook.